nutrient stress, we're depriving some of these plants of nitrogen, some of phosphorus, and some of potassium. And I thought this was a good opportunity to show, to show uh, what these deficiencies of these major macronutrients would look like in the above ground biomass and perhaps help uh, some people out there diagnose what these deficiencies may look like uh, in plants of their own. So here we have uh, an example of four of these plants. We have what we call a control plant here, which is receiving optimal nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So this plant has everything it needs to grow healthy. Here we have a maize plant that is deficient in nitrogen. Here's one that's deficient in phosphorus. And this is an example of a plant that's deficient in potassium. So we can see some of these uh, visual differences that occur within these four uh, different treatments. And I'll go over each one uh, at a closer look in a little bit more detail to help you really see uh, the differences here to identify uh, when plants may be experiencing nitrogen deficiency, phosphorus deficiency, or potassium deficiency. So nitrogen is the macronutrient which is needed in the highest concentrations for plant growth relative to the other macronutrients, phosphorus and potassium. And here we can see an example of a plant that's experiencing some pretty severe nitrogen deficiency. Now, in plants, nitrogen is an important component of amino acids and nucleic acids like DNA, uh, but it's also especially important for chlorophyll. And we can see this manifested in some of the visible symptoms of the leaf tissue in plants that are deficient in nitrogen. So without available uh, adequate amount of nitrogen to make chlorophyll, we can see the leaves of this nitrogen deficient plant are pretty uh, pale green to almost yellowish in color relative to a plant that has adequate nitrogen availability. Now, this chlorosis of uh, the leaves will typically manifest in the older leaf tissue um, of plants experiencing nitrogen stress because nitrate or nitrogen is a mobile nutrient within the plant. Uh, so plants, what they're doing is they're taking the nitrogen that's in their older leaf tissue and then moving it into the new growth. So we'll see this chlorosis occurring on these older leaves uh, first uh, and typically with nitrogen deficiency, this will occur along the midrib of these older leaves um, at the tip and then moving along the midrib in almost a V-shaped pattern of chlorosis and then eventually necrosis, we can see uh, on the tip of this leaf. Um, and typically the environments that we'll see nitrogen deficiency mo most prevalent in will be uh, soils that are very low in organic matter as well as soils that are very sandy uh, where nitrogen uh, can leach very easily out of that soil. So phosphorus is also an important component of nucleic acids like DNA, as well as energy transfer compounds like ATP. So when a plant is experiencing phosphorus deficiency, what we'll typically see is a stunting of growth, as well as delayed development, so maybe delayed flowering time, as well as uh, accumulation of anthocyanins in the older uh, tissues of this plant. And we can see this as this purpling of the lower stem and these older leaves of the plant because phosphorus is mobile within the plant, um, plants are able to translocate the phosphorus from the older tissue into their newer growth, uh, leaving these older leaf tissues uh, purple in color, while the newer leaf tissue may appear uh, normal, although stunted relative to a plant that has adequate phosphorus. Now it's important to note that uh, simply, it may not be that soils don't have enough overall phosphorus, but that that phosphorus may not be plant available. It may be tied up with calcium or aluminum, depending on uh, the pH of the soil. So it may not necessarily just be that there's not phosphorus present within the soil, but that it's not plant available. Um, additionally, some species of plants in response to phosphorus stress can allocate more of their growth to, uh, to root growth rather than the shoot growth. So we may see increased uh, proliferation of roots under phosphorus deficit as well. Now, potassium deficiency may not be as common as nitrogen or phosphorus deficiency, but it can occur in severely weathered soils. Uh, now, potassium is important for protein synthesis, uh, stomatal regulation, as well as cell wall thickening. So, uh, plants that are deficient in potassium can be especially sensitive to uh, water deficit, since they're not as able to tightly regulate the opening and closing of their stomata to help uh, reduce water loss through transpiration. Um, additionally, because it's involved in cell wall thickening, they may be more susceptible to disease as well. Now, like phosphorus and nitrogen, potassium is also mobile looking plant. So again, we'll see the, uh, the symptoms 
of this nutrient deficiency manifest in the older leaf tissue first. Uh, as the plant is moving the potassium that's present within the older leaf tissue into that newer growth. Uh, now, it will appear as, a, again, as a chlorosis or a necrosis of the lower leaf tissue, sort of similar to nitrogen, but unlike nitrogen, it won't begin to manifest along the midrib of the leaf, but will in fact uh, start to manifest along the margins of that leaf first, as the plant is pulling potassium out of the edges of the leaf uh, and then moving it into this newer growth here.